materialized atoms help to build up the spiritual body of man. But when this is not so, these seminal germs, if not passed off amid the other secretions from the body, live and germinate a swarm of elemental lifeless life forms which rob the organism of a portion of its vitality. So you see how misuse of the, the sexual organism can rob the organism of vitality, whereas the proper use can transmute those seminal fluids, can transmute them into spiritual energy. To obey the laws of nature is the only safe and sure road to the spiritual evolution of the senses of the soul, and one of those laws is the rightful union of the sexes. Celibacy in its in itself is not a natural state. It is purely artificial because it ignores one of the principal elements of its being. Therefore, there is great spiritual danger in the celibate life. And nine-tenths of the mystical manias and spiritual saturnalia of past history have originated among celibates. Uh, so they're showing the proper use of the sexual union and how it can um, etherealize the um, the body's seminal fluids and turn them into spiritual energies. Uh, another uh, book I'd like to recommend is The Secret Science uh, by John Barnes, and there's a beautiful chapter in there dealing with sex. And um, it says there, sex is life. It is found... In it is found the mystery of man's life. It may be considered as the guardian of the vital flame of all the body. When it is exhausted, death occurs. Exoterically speaking, sex is concerned only as the centre of the body destined for the purpose of reproduction and is what therefore produces the differentiation between male and female. Esoterically, however, it may be considered as a powerful generating centre and producer of electromagnetic energy which continuously vibrates like electricity. This power emanates directly from the original source, that is, from God. And its mission is the maintenance of life. It is due to this that life emanates from sex, and from there it is transmitted to the different centres of the body. So how vital is that, that we have a force an electromagnetic energy which continuously vibrates like electricity and the power which emanates directly from the original source. Any wonder that the clergy and the priestcraft would like to see us not practice, uh, practice sex, you see, uh, because it is directly connected with the source. All right, so... Um, I've gone way over the time. I was supposed to do all that in the first hour. <laughs> so uh, please forgive me. All right. Um, let's take some questions then, guys. Um, is there anyone that would like to hop on audio and video and uh, throw in a question for us? Or go ahead and punch in the questions. Please, if you could put the word question or a question mark at the start, so that I know what I'm reading, because there's a lot of stuff here in the chat, and I haven't been able to follow any of it, <laughs> because I'm so slow. If I distract myself and uh, watch those comments, I'll um, go off the um, I'll go off the uh, subject, and I'll lose my attention. And I've done that about three or four times already today, <laughs> so I apologise for that. <laughs> All right. Uh, so Enza wants to hop on. Okay, uh, what is the name of the book and author, please, you just read from? That's The Secret Science, John Baines. And um, it's Hermetic Science. It's Hermetic Wisdom, The Secret Science. It's all based on Hermetic Wisdom. Wisdom. He is a Rosicrucian and uh, very uh, very insightful man. All right, Tasha, I'll uh, get off now and I'll... Um, uh, Donna, is it? Sorry. Okay. Any question? 
All right. Uh, the question above. I know for sure a teenager is not a grown adult. So why is this becoming a trend? I don't understand the question. Uh, you're talking about... Um, Oh, yes, okay. Um, yes, well, look, in the media, you, and especially uh, MTV and uh, the music industry, etc., because the, these are very, very powerful elite uh, labels and corporations, uh, yes, they are trying to sell sex to young children, but that's the wrong kind of sex. It's purely physical, you see. So they're making sex um, purely a physical object, which is, um, which is the negative kind of sex. That's the sex that is the waste of energy, you see. Uh, they're not out there to teach these young children about any of the spiritual virtues of sex. They want them just to go out and have a physical good time, which is destructive. Now, you see, this is the corporate Illuminati, you could say. I don't like using the word Illuminati because Illuminati is a good word, <laughs> you know. And so is elite, really. Elite means the best of. So what are what are they the best of? Well, they are the elite economically. That's all. They're not scrupulously elite. They're not aristocratic in their soul evolution. They're a bunch of thugs. They call themselves the elite. And I suppose the ignoramus world of the plebeian masses call them the elite. They don't deserve this. They don't deserve to be called Illuminati. They don't deserve to be called any of these beautiful expressions. Um, but you see, these corporations, and I know Sony is one of the worst. Uh, the Sony label is, is absolutely putrid. Um, they will put out vomitous clips, and in fact, they control their artists and ensure that their artists um, put out nothing but venom and poison and sexual pollution and all kinds of aberrations to pollute the minds of young children. It's sickening. They're not being instructed about proper use of sex and the spiritual thing about it. See, everything in this world, and even in Christianity and the churches, is all about the material world, physical. They deny the spiritual causes. They absolutely deny it. The Hermetist is one that embraces the physical causes. Okay. So sacred sex has been abandoned as one can reach the creator. Add to love in the world through sacred sex. Yes. Yeah, of course. It's it's all about that. Sex should not be prohibited. Sex should not be uh, dogmatized, stigmatized. It should be um, uh, uh, the, tr the truth about its spiritual qualities should be taught and uh, educated the, the young young children should be ed educated in this rather than the physical aspect of it all right sorry to waffle on but uh, <laughs> about that i think i've answered that the vatican are they behind this media advocation of underage sex absolutely everything putrid everything putrid in the world goes directly back to the vatican they're on the top they are on the top, and they are the ones that are first and foremostly connected to the dark satellite. They are the ones at the very, very top. And all of their other corporations, like the United States, that's a corporation, that's a Vatican corporation, uh, Monsanto, um, Bayer and Bayern and all of these pharmaceutical corporations, the military-industrial complex, that's all run by the Vatican. The whole lot of it, it's all, they're all pirate businesses that are raping and pillaging the earth just for the benefit of the power and control of the elite. Uh, what chakra is the dark satellite related to? I believe it's, um, I believe it's the, um, the, the one of the bottom three, I would say the, um, the solar plexus. So, because you've got mineral and animal, and then you've uh, mineral and plant, then animal, and then you've got the human chakras. So, 
possibly the power, yeah, the power, the sex, or the survival. I believe that's what the three bottom chakras are dealing with. It's certainly the bottom chakras. There's no doubt about that. It's not the heart chakra above. Although the heart chakra is still in the middle, you see. It still has to do with the soul, which partakes of two bodies. You see, the soul is partaking of the physical body, but not the spirit. And so the spiritual chakras are the ones that where we uh, focus all of our intent when, we, when we're dealing with sexuality. Um, you see, this is why physical sex is an aberration, because young men in particular who are the ones who stand to lose the most because they have to, well, in, in the sexual act, in the orgasm, they are actually giving a part of themselves. Uh, rather than going past that, rather than going past that initial 10 or 20 minutes of pleasure that they can derive from sex physically, rather than withholding their powers and exercising great restraint and, and power of mind and, 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 and of soul uh, to make, you know, to have sacred sex with their partners, uh, they will, um, you know, they'll be keen to have a, a physical experience. They will never be able to transmute their energies because they've got to be working with more subtle energies in the sexual experience rather than the grosser energies. You can work with the grosser energies if you like. It's like your diet. If you want to eat a microwaved uh um, processed and dead food, you can do that. I mean, I see people that, um, in, you know, in this country, there are people who have a diet of basically just fish and chips. They call it fish and chips, fried fish and potatoes, you know, and they live and they're, um, you know, they chug along doing whatever they've got to do. Or you can eat raw, vital foods which, which are organic and unsprayed and fresh to give your body vitality. And that's the same with sex. You can work with, you know, the grosser elements of sex or you can go with the more ethereal states. But in order to experience ethereal sex, you have to go past the physical. Simple as that. You have to have a, a, a spiritual experience. And that's why it's such a beautiful source, gift from the divine sexuality. Because with your partner, you can reach a very, very, very high state of unity consciousness. Very, very high of ethereal state of unity consciousness. And that's what love is. It should be loving, not lustful. You see, the lustful part of it, I mean, it's there. Okay, we experience that. It's definitely there. But we should know of its purpose, that it's only primary and fundamental, and not to to be convinced that that's all that is there. Some people never never have loving sexual relationships. It's all about lust. There's not a, a thought about love and, and uh, spirituality and mysticism. They miss the point. Yeah, look, I thank you for that that compliment that um, that I've that I've said that that I've said that well because I don't know. Sometimes I sound like I'm waffling on. I'm trying to be uh, concise and succinct. But at the same time, I'm trying to give a, an elaborate, an elaborate enough answer so that I can, um, uh, you know, answer the question. So thank you very much for that. Um, I'm doing my best. <laughs> I don't know everything. No one does. And um, uh, so I'll, I'll certainly have a go. And um, because we need knowledge, we certainly do need direct knowledge and not be repeaters of unfounded, in, uh, unfounded and unverifiable wrong information, which the Vatican and Rome are expert at doing. All right. We need to come out of this dark age and soon. Yes, look, good one, Ruth. Yes, the dark age is still with us. But remember what Thomas H. Burgoyne said, that the dark satellite is receding, but it's always darkest before dawn. The dawn is there. There is a dawn coming, and, and it's not even worth doubting this. You know, because we look around and we, we see a lot of 
rubbish that's happening around the world and we wonder, is it really coming sometimes? You know, when we feel down and, and uh, depressed, which we do. Um, but it's not even worth wasting one second of that negative energy because even if it doesn't come, it's better to be, it's better to be positive and to, to create with your mind the expectation of knowing that wonderful things are on the horizon. It's the darkness before the dawn, believe you me. But um, there is no doubt. There is no reason to doubt. All the prophecies, all the cycles, they're all telling of the time to come in which there will be a darkness and then there will be light. And you have to feel sorry. I noticed the comment before about someone said that uh, we shouldn't uh, have any hate for the elites. And we shouldn't uh, have any, um, you know, any negative feelings towards them. That's true. We shouldn't, because that's their chosen path. Path. It's not ours. And they're our brothers. They are our brothers who have made some bad decisions. That's all, because they are living in the the animal kingdom of undeveloped good, and they don't understand goodness. They don't understand that goodness comes from unconditional love, and comes from a a high evolution and a, and a conscious decision that you have made forever in perpetuity to stand on the side of, of, of the good. Suicidal tendencies, yes, they are absolutely an influence of the dark satellite. Absolutely. And this is where psychiatrists and doctors and other buffoons are not... Um, have no understanding of the spiritual causes for depression. And that is because there are many of these astral beings that are attaching themselves magnetically to our young ones who, who get depressed. And all of a sudden, they, these beings start to control their personalities and cause them to, to be depressed because the beings themselves are looking to prolong their existences. You see, everyone's looking to prolong their, uh, to their, their survival and these negative creatures are latching on to young ones and, and spiritually and mentally are causing them a lot of, a lot of a danger. These young ones, rather than taking medi medications, they will be best served to have someone to go to, to a uh, clairvoyant, you see, or, or someone that can clearly see and, and know what their, their problems are um, and uh, be able to uh, help them someone who is positively, electrically spiritual that will be able to give them some, some uh, spiritual help to be able to give them strength to get rid of these negative emotions through um, breathing and, and spiritual practices, you see. Cleansing. Uh, okay, uh, suicide is a, um, what happens to people who commit suicide? Suicide, according to the Platonic theology and Hermetic theology, is a great, it's a great sin. <laughs> it's a great crime. And, uh, but of course, one must remember that people who commit suicide are desperate. It's the last, it's the last thing that they really want to do, but they do it because they're desperate. You know, it's a, they must be desperate, these poor people. So um, there would have to be some forgiveness. There would have to be some some uh, remedy. There would have to be. But it is it is a grave, grave error. And um, it, it does not help to commit suicide. It doesn't help at all. There's no relief. It's not a relief. It's probably a temporary relief, but the lessons learned, um, the lessons have to be learned so that the individual must must go through those lessons at another stage in their life's journey. They must face that stage. Uh, those concentrating on a significant changing energy are those involved with the Occupy Wall Street movement, peaceful and stop and correct philosophy. Yeah, okay, so um, that's not a question, uh, okay. Um, but uh, yes, 
uh, there are people who are protesting. I wouldn't uh, advocate protesting, but these people are protesting and they're good people. There's a lot of good people there and that is their way. Uh, it, that is their way of trying to get things improved. You see, rather than attacking these, these people who are out there striving to, to cause an effect and a change in, in this uh, worldly plane, as some people are doing, uh, criticising them outrightly, um, although I don't encourage that sort of thing because it's not on the level where we can procreate more effectively. We are, cre we are creators by being the change that we want to see by really being the change that we want to see. And we'll, we'll, we'll work this out as we go. You see, we are being the change that we want to see. All right. Um, any other questions there? Does anyone want to hop on audio? I'd love for someone to hop on audio. Put your hand up, please. <laughs> hop on. Why has the earth and humanity been allowed to be hijacked by these dark forces? Doesn't it go against spiritual universal law? No, it doesn't because it's the cycle. Um, we've, been in, <clears throat> we've been in darkness for 5,000 years. It's just a natural cycle. And the darkness does help us to come through into the light. You see, just like the, the dark of the night, we go to sleep at the dark of the night. Just excuse me one minute. Hit on me. Can I have a tea, please? Just order the tea. <laughs> My mouth's getting dry. Um, but um, <clears throat> here's another great book that I've been recommending in, in, recommending in my presentations recently by Stephen Miller. And in, in here, he explains that we have been in a darkness for 5,000 years. And it's been called the, uh, the Age of Amun, you see. Now, before the Age of Amun was the Age of Atom. And there was much, much more conscious light. About six or 7,000 years ago, we were at the peak of consciousness. Uh, and then this major consciousness fall happened. And it's it's natural cycle. It's just a natural cycle. The age of our moon. Just like when the sun goes down on the horizon, you know, at 8pm, 8, 8 for instance. When the light of the sun goes down, you can't see what you're doing if you don't have any lamps or any lights. But the, the, the physical light of the sun enables us to see with these eyes. When the sun goes down, it takes away that, that sense. The sun is responsible for this sense. It's the boss of this sight. So when the sun goes down, we see no more. There's only, only darkness. Well, this happens in the 24,000-year Great Year Cycle. We go from the Golden Age down through the Silver through the bronze, down to the iron, and in the iron age, we lose the sight of our third eye. We lose it. So we can't see these spiritual things. And we have, we have many so-called spiritual people that go to church who think they can see with that eye, and they call themselves spiritual. Oh, we're spiritual. We're going to church. They're not. They're physical. They are materialistic. They see only with these eyes. They cannot see with this eye. And whilst they acknowledge spiritual themes, they do that intellectually. They don't know. You see, they don't know the spirit personally, themselves. They think they do. They convince themselves that they do. So this is why um, we've, been, we've, we've gone through this age of darkness. It's taught us a lesson, humanity. It has taught humanity a lesson. Not to rely on the senses. Not to rely on the physical five lower senses. See, what's happening now is, is a reactivating of the 360 senses. They are being reactivated slowly but surely. And we're starting to get a sense of these higher senses now. 
We haven't got them all yet. We, they're not all complete. But, uh, uh, but of course, and in this book, the indigenous wisdom keepers of, of wisdom in Egypt tell us that those 360 senses are about to be reactivated. And it will happen suddenly. And believe you me, many people will not be able to activate those senses and they will miss out because they are doing low vibratory things with their lives. They will miss out. They will be punished. You know, the goodies, they will not receive the goodies. It's like the seven virgins that Jesus talked about in the, and said, the, and the Lord said, the, um, the bridegroom said, uh, wait for me, the bridegroom is coming. And the seven virgins, they took their lamps and their oil, you see. But, um, but some of them were not wise. They didn't bring uh, reciprocals of, um, of oil so that they could refill their lanterns when the oil ran dry, you see. So the virgins were supposed to be waiting for their Lord, their bridegroom, see, but, but uh, many of them took reciprocals and when their lamps ran out, they refilled them and relit the lamps so they were still waiting. So in other words, they were spiritually waiting. They were spiritually alert, waiting for the Lord, waiting for the consciousness to return so that they could be remarried with their consciousness and remember who they are. That's what it's talking about. It's pure Shakespearean poetry. It's not physical. Um, but the point is this, that um, some of those virgins, their oil ran out, you see. So they said, oh, we're going to run off to get some oil. See, and when they ran off to get some oil, the bridegroom came, took the faithful virgins who had reciprocals of oil and were waiting, took them off and married them, and the others missed out. Well, what it's saying is this, that people who have not got spiritual light waiting through the dark ages of Amun, and who are not keeping their spirituality activated because they are relying on their five senses. When the 360 senses return, the bridegroom, when it returns, they miss out. They miss out on receiving those beautiful ethereal senses and going into the other dimensions, the fifth dimension, whatever, the fourth, the fifth dimension. Um, they they will not be able to use those senses, whereas we will. We will be able to use our psychic senses. Tele telepathy, we won't have to speak. You know, we'll, we'll be able to um, return to using all of our magical powers. Hermetic wisdom is all about magical powers and restoring those magical powers. And how you restore those magical powers is by bringing this kundalini up into the head, where the head knows, the pineal gland knows, because the pineal gland is the third eye. It sees. But see, these people, they've, they've had their pineal, pineal glands fluoridated and, uh, and uh, crystallized, you know, and, um, and uh, what's the word? Um, uh, but, uh, but anyway, they, their pineal glands won't be activated. There's not a hope, not a hope. They're living in their bottom chakras dangerously. It's very dangerous how they're living. All right, um, let's go. Uh, technology. Why were the Native Americans able to coexist with nature for so long, but not Europeans? The dark satellite. Uh, why did it not affect Native Americans? Oh, no, it did affect Native Americans. They were sacrifi sacrificing humans as well. Um, they, also, they also fell into dark practices. Um, they were also doing things that these, the dark satellite was commanding them to do you know, to create fear in the Mayan culture. You see, when they, they would cut out the heart of the victim and, and hold it up to the gods, they were holding it up to the dark satellite who was demanding blood, just like the Vatican. The Vatican has, you see, it's hard to incriminate people involved with the Vatican because they have the dark satellite of nasty animal forces, very intelligent and powerful, who are demanding blood. They love blood. They love the holocausts and the shedding of blood. It's all about blood sacrifice, guys. If you ever stop and wonder how many lives have been lost in the last century, 100 million civilians alone died as a result of wars. First World War, Second World War, etc., Korea, Vietnam. 100 million? 100 million lives. That's blood shedding. That has got to be the dark satellite. They're in there. 
Oh, okay. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Um, sorry, David. Thanks for the. Um, yeah. Thanks for the message. Okay. I'm gonna click off now, and I'm going to ask. Hi, um, I just wanted to ask Santos, um, it's about the church, um, why do they um, push uh, celibacy for vicars and other people going into the church if celibacy is not a good thing, which you stated earlier, just wanted to ask that, why they make people do that, thanks. Thanks Donna, yeah. Uh... Because of the power that they can have over people who are sexually divided, who are guilty because of, um, because of misusing, misusing, according to their rules, misusing uh, sexuality, you see. Uh, when a celibate priest happens to masturbate because he's just, he's got so much pent up sexual energy doesn't know what to do or he goes down to the you know the nunnery and chats up one of the nuns and um and and then the result of that is just powerful guilt and trauma and they want traumatized people once you're guilty and traumatized you lose any sense of your divinity and your powers and you can be controlled and manipulated celibacy is a tool of the controllers hope i answered that properly Okay, I'm going to go off again now and uh, get another question. Okay, um, I just thought I'd, I'd just grab a few seconds of air time because um, there's, no, there's no one um, seems to be ready. Just, just um, pop a question mark in the chat when, you, when you're ready. But um, I, I noticed a, um, a really good comment there. Um, do they pretend to be celibate? Paul, thanks. <laughs> do they pretend to be celibate? Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> they pretend. Uh, in fact, a lot of the cardinals and um, the uh, and the pope are uh, the pope's homosexual, and uh, most of the cardinals are homosexual. Um, you see, and this is they teach that um, they have in 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 their teaching they teach that it's very wrong to be homosexual. You see, uh, but they are in fact, and um, and so it's interesting. They're they're full of paradoxes and um, contradictions. It's it's they are full of contradictions, full of them. Everything they talk about, everything it's all contradictions. Everything, the whole lot of it. And yeah, they pretend to be, you know, um, uh, heterosexual. They pretend to be monogamous. They pretend to be uh, celibate. They pretend a lot of things. <laughs> they, they, it's all about pretense. It's all about false, showy display on the outward. What is out there? is not the same as what is in there, in this world. There's a lot of um, dishonesty. Yeah, okay, there's another question. All right, I'm going off. I'll take the question. Thank you. Hi Santos, I was
Hi, Cindy. Um, I did hear you, but um, I didn't hear any question. So uh, would you like me to get back off so you can ask that question? Uh, and um, I just noticed the word that calcified pineal glands. Yes, that's what it is. Calcification. Fluoride, fluoride in the water calcifies the pineal gland. Uh, that's why I would uh, recommend that you drink um, unfluoridated water if you can get it. Uh, I have a filter which takes, which removes the fluoride, but I'm not quite sure if it is, is uh, one that I can recommend. But um, if you'd like to know, I can send you a link. Um, you can get these filters from uh, the United States for about $170, and I use one. Uh, flu fluoridating water, the water is um, is mass medication. It's medicating the masses. It's 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 without their consent. You see, because most people don't know that it's they they believe it's um, it's something uh, natural. It's a natural element. It's not fluorine is chlorine is. Uh, but fluoride is not a natural element. It's a byproduct of the uh, aluminium industry, the fertilizer industry, etc. It's and it's not even uh, pharmaceutical grade, pharmaceutical grade of fluoride. <laughs> it's industrial grade. They actually dump the worst kind of crap in the water. It's industrial, and the people who are doing it in government, of course, these are these intelligent human beasts that we're talking about, animals. Are quite happy to take a paycheck to um, to um, you know to sell sell their souls and the country to the banksters controlled by the Vatican who fluoridate who fluoridate the waters. Yeah, fifteen percent. 15 points of the IQ. Uh, fluoride in water takes 15 points off a person's IQ, yeah. If not more, David, I would say uh, <laughs> I'd hazard a guess of about uh, 50, 50 points. <laughs> I might be exaggerating, but uh, it's, it's, um, it's uh, detrimental. Very detrimental. Reverse osmosis, yes, that's a, um, a good um, process. I believe it takes a lot of uh, water. It uses a lot of water, so it's a bit wasteful, but um, I've been hearing that it's very, very good. All right, guys, I think that about wraps up the hour, and um, I'd like to thank one and all. I suppose we can do the same old thing as last week. I'm quite happy to hang back another 10 minutes afterwards. If anyone would like to, can you let me know? Uh, otherwise, I'm equally as happy just to um, uh, wish you all the best and say goodbye now and see you all next week. If you like, um, no one, I didn't get anyone, I did suggest that you um, send me a, a message asking what subjects you'd like me to talk about. I didn't really get many. Uh, so, I, I, of course, I established the dark satellite. Uh, but could you please let me know and indicate whether you'd like me to um, share some more along those themes next week because um, there's quite a bit more there in the dark satellite and I think I think it's quite important to get that one out of the way and understand the nature of um, the nature of evil all right so um, looks like the the feedback is good about that thank you and uh, I'll be around in uh, 10, 10 minutes for another 10 minutes, I guess. Um, but uh, if there's no questions, I'm happy to say goodbye now. Thanks, guys, and we'll see you next week. Thank you, David, so much. Thank you, Ruth, and uh, everybody else helping out. I'm, I'm not sure who else is helping. Uh, I know that David is taking care of um, and doing a wonderful job of making sure that the... Um, the conference uh, goes well. And by the way, David has been holding a conference 
um, in his webinar on uh, Wednesday nights, nine o'clock, for a long time, and has been um, um, sharing much information, good information, up-to-date information um, in his webinars. If you'd like to join, please, Dave, if you can put a link for that. And um, this is, of course, David's um, conference webinar um, software that he uses, and we're using it uh, with um, his uh, help. So I'd like to thank David and uh, Ruth. Ruth has been helping with David to sort of get it all going because I'm not really so good with all this uh, computer stuff <laughs> and I need the help and I appreciate it. So uh, thanks once again. Have a great week. Take care.